Hi, for this Think for a Change video, I'm going to talk about um, a relatively recent news story that happened um, that has been classified, and I think rightly so, as a hate crime. What I'm referring to is the murder of James Craig Anderson in Mississippi that actually occurred on June 26th. That's two weeks ago from today, August 9th, when I just caught wind of this story, and it seems like attention is finally picking up on this incident. Um, the way that the story goes quickly is that there were seven white teens who were partied and then decided to go out and intentionally try to find a black person to mess with. Unfortunately, they found James Anderson, he seems to be the first person they came across, and then they brutally, violently beat him up, and once, what's more, um, ran over him, murdering him at the end of the attack. And they caught it all on surveillance tape, so they know what the situation was, um, but there's a couple things to mention. First of all, the news coverage of this hate crime has been very, very, very sparse. What little coverage has occurred over the past two weeks um, seems to be mostly or exclusively obtained um, in the footage at least by CNN and CNN reported on the video with a title of hate crime question mark as if this is a question so the late response the lack of response and the timidity of this response I think is worrisome in that this is taking away the significance of racism in the United States and that it still happens here today 2011 um, so, but I'm not going to talk about that. I'm not going to harp about how horrible this situation is, how incredibly disheartening and enraging that the fact that this happens is, because I hope that that is obvious. I hope that there are people who are livid and want to do something about this. What I do want to do, though, is note that there has to be something for us to do that involves something more than what's already been done. So I want to caution against um, the responses that I imagine will probably be generating on YouTube, which are those people who just say, oh, this is such a sad event, it is, or say, this is so horrible, I don't know how this can happen. Yeah, it's befuddling, right? Mind-blowing. Well, it happens because people are racist, but that's a different issue. But I don't, I, I want to try to caution against those sort of attitudes that simply say, oh, this is sad, how could it happen? And I also want to caution against the the way that this situation can be deemed an exception, an exceptional hate crime that, yes, is horrific and violent and brutal, but racism doesn't just take the form of these exceptionally violent hate crimes that seem to be few and far between. Racism is something that happens all the time on many different levels in its operation, and if this is what we see as now there's racism, then we're only getting the tip of the iceberg. And that is significant for us to pay attention to because it focuses our attention only on a very small portion of what is a beast like the system of oppression called racism in the United States. So because if we only pay attention to these exceptional cases and say, oh, this is horrific and sad, I think we'll be missing something very important. I think one important task, and which is why I'm making this video now, is to encourage us that we cannot effectively do anything to challenge racism unless we critically examine it for what it actually is and how it really operates on many different levels so that we can more effectively challenge and resist it and do something to try to prevent these things from happening again. So rather than just sitting there and saying, oh, this is horrible, why are people racist, why can't we just get along, isn't this 2011? Those empty statements don't do much. Now, I want to say, let's do something, and the most that I can offer for now, right now, with YouTube, and this is my thing, is to say, let's think about how racism really operates. Let's try to understand it more critically. So as usual, I'm going to reintroduce to you um, a couple of books. I'm just going to suggest that this one is The Racial Contract by Charles Mills. Um, and the second one that I want to offer is this, Racism and Sexual Oppression in Anglo-America, A Genealogy by Liddell McWhorter. And a third book, I don't have a copy available right now to show you the cover, unfortunately, but it is called Revealing Whiteness, The Unconscious Habits of Racial Privilege by Shannon Sullivan. And I offer you these three books um, as opportunities for exploration about new perspectives on how we can understand racism. I'm not saying that these three people have the, def the definitive stories on what racism is and how it is 
working in the United States, but they do offer critical redescriptions of things that we often take for granted. So my hope is that in reading books like this, these are three that I highly recommend, um, it will, they offer compelling arguments that I think are very provocative and hopefully can open up new ways for us to think about uh, racism and oppression in general. So the reason why I think that new ways of thinking about racism is important is because we need new ways of trying to resist this. So like I said before, what I want to caution against are simply falling into the tired responses of um, this is awful or saying, well, good thing not all white people think like those seven white students or seven white kids who just did this horrible act of violence. Another thing is to say, wow, people are racist, but I'm glad I'm not racist. <laughs> or why can't we all just get along? And even worse would be falling into statements of things like racism will never go away because it's always been the case, or racism will never go away because it's too big of a problem for us to contend with, or to say that racism isn't an issue, which I think that one's just plain wrong. But in those, as I'm saying, our tired responses, there's too much deflection, dismissal, and despair. And those are three things that are not helpful when it comes to what are we going to do about this? How are we going to challenge racism in this country? Deflection, saying it's not me thank goodness dismissal of oh this is horrible but what are we going to do and then despair to say there's nothing we can do not helpful so this is this is an important question for me lately i've been thinking about how do we address major major political systems and forms of oppression like homophobia transphobia racism etc and one of the things that i can think of is that we have to discipline ourselves to be able to understand and think differently about our world so that we can own up to a sort of responsibility for the ways in which you might actually be racist. And that's a provocative thing to say, also very challenging, and people might immediately shut off by saying, well, I may be white, but I'm not racist. Maybe that's part of the problem because, like I said, racism doesn't function on just the tiny little level of you might not be going out there and beating up non-white people. Good for you. Thank you. But that doesn't mean that you don't somehow maintain a system of oppression, perhaps without knowing it, or perhaps under the best intentions. And so, for instance, if we think that racism is only what people do when they go out to attack a victim who they've identified ahead of time as their targeted victim, then you could say, I'm not racist because I don't do that. But then we're forgetting the way that racism actually operates in other areas of our lives too. So I'm encouraging us to ask questions, critical questions about what racism is, and then follow those questions up by really trying to explore possible answers, not to get the definitive answer of this is what we're going to do about it, but to ask questions, follow them up with an exploration that might give us new understandings of what racism is, of what race is, and of how we are in ways that promote and perpetuate things like racism. So that we can do things when this sort of stuff happens. We can do more than just say, this is awful. We can actually engage with one another differently. We can change our subtle behaviors in ways that might have an impact so that we can respond to horrible hate crimes in a way that makes a difference without falling into despair. And hopefully we can also think differently so that we can conceptualize new understandings of how to be in the world, how to relate to others, so that these sorts of things won't happen so much in the future. Maybe we can take up the responsibility that we all have a role to play in this and then push ourselves in directions with small baby steps to say maybe this could be differently and maybe things like racism and hate crimes and the violent murder of people based on things like the color of their skin don't have to happen any longer in this country. So thanks for watching. <laughs> Best of luck to all of us.